can change it up every week. Um, but this one's just going to be about APRA. And next week, I think I'm going to do PPCA. Um, we can do one on contracts. So just like we might even just share screen to um, a contract that, you know, even the Hot Sunday contract or a contract from another label. And each week, basically just do a little bit differently. I'll take some advice off you guys. So if people have any kind of like questions or any topics that might be good to talk about, just message me during the week and I'll make, I'll compile a little list and hopefully, you know, over a period of the next six, eight weeks, we'll, we'll be able to cover a bunch of bases on different topics. I think the whole kind of purpose behind this is, I don't know, I guess, I was thinking about how I knew all this information and the only way that I knew any of this was people told me. I didn't read or learn anything online. There was no instructional information really. Like I know that APRA is really good. They have um, a few like um, free drinks and events where you can come and you can learn a bit, which is really cool. But unless you're kind of online and connected to the right people, you don't really know to attend. Um, so, and obviously we can't really do that right now. So this, I think this is just the best way to just see a few people, say good day, and maybe have a little bit of um, knowledge and something that, something that hopefully will help you guys out. As I, as I said, this is all, all the information I'm going to cover is, I think, essential for everyone to know whether you're in artist management, uh, whether you're a new artist to the industry, or whether you just want to kind of learn more. You might be a label um, and you might just want to push some artists into the right directions. Um, and show them this information and where they should be signing up to. Um, it's just common knowledge that everyone should know. It's just going to protect you as well, long term from record labels that might not have your best interests in heart. They might want to take advantage of you, sign you up long term, and then uh, take all your money. Which I mean, not every label is like that. It's become a lot less common, but there are still a few out there. Um, all right, well, what I'll do is I will get started. So basically this today is about APRA. It's about, we're gonna talk about publishing, writers splits. We're gonna talk why, why would you need to register to APRA? What is APRA? Um, how do writer and performer splits even work? Um, where do royalties come from? Um, so do you uh, register like a remix you might do for someone else to APRA? Um, does each writer of a track need to individually register their tracks to APRA? And obviously APRA has affiliates in other countries. Do you need to register to them? So we're going to chat about all that kind of stuff um, today. First of all, to understand whether you need to write uh, register to APRA, you need to kind of understand whether you're writing music and, and kind of how the song uh, royalties and payments flow. So before we talk about registering a track to APRA, we're going to talk about the different splits. Uh, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so where are we? All right, here we go. So I'm just going to pick Color Castle songs. I'm sorry about that. It's not, it's not for self promotion or anything like that. It's just, I know the splits. I know how the tracks work. And I think it's going to just make a bit more sense for me to do it that way. So the first track I'm going to pick is Color Castle and Damon Truett, Night Road. And I'm going to explain basically how the splits for this track work. Because if you look at this song, Color Castle, Damon Truett, Night Road, you're going to be like, okay, cool. Color Castle and Damon Truett, um, they're the writers. But in fact, you're going to be wrong. Um, Damon Truett in this track, he didn't actually write anything. He is a fantastic writer. He's an amazing vocalist. But it just happened that the lyrics for this track were written before uh, this came across his table. Um, he actually just sang the written lyrics and recorded them and we used him for the track. So the writers of this track are Max and Tom Marvell from the Northern Beaches. They wrote the lyrics. And then there's myself and Casper Tromp who wrote the instrumental. Now, <clears throat> The difference between Color Castle and Damon Truitt, Max Marvel, Tom Marvel, Christian Pillard, and Casper Trump. Color Castle and Damon Truitt are the performers. These guys here, myself, Casper, Max, and Tom, are the writers. So there's the two different splits. There's the two different avenues for revenue. And there, there's two different places where you actually need to register 
your track. Uh, now, if you do look here, I've got the third one, which is streaming. That's uh, and music purchases, which is your royalties. And that's going to be coming from a record label. So this PDF, I'm going to put in like a little Dropbox or something. So you will be able to go back to and check it out. Uh, I'll just run through that one more time though. Color Castle and Damon Truett Night Road, how the splits work. The writers splits, the people who wrote the track are right here in number one. And this is what we're going to be registering to APRA. So now that we've worked out who the writers are for the track, we know what we're going to register to APRA. The master split, which is going to be a registration to PPCA, is what we're going to talk about next week. Um, so we're not going to really worry about this two and three for now. We're just going to focus on number one, which is the writer or publisher split, as it's also called. And this is what we're registering to APRA. So, okay, let's get to APRA. Before we can register our track to APRA, you need to, if you don't already have a membership, join up. And also by now you'll know whether or not you need to register to APRA. Have you written a track? If you haven't written any music, then you don't need to really register just yet. Um, okay, but we have written a track. We're jumping into APRA here. We're going to go to music creators. And I'm not going to bore you guys by creating an, a whole membership. It is really straightforward. But again, I'm going to answer any questions. If someone's going through this and they're not quite sure, hit me up and I'm just going to reply as soon as possible. And, and we can run through it together. Uh, all right, so the, I'm gonna have these links as well. What have I got here? So I'm gonna put this as well in like a little Dropbox or Drive folder, which I'll, I'll share with you guys. And it's gonna have just all the links there. Um, and it's also gonna have just a direct link to the APRA International Affiliates. I'm gonna log in here. And I'm going to, once I log in, I'm actually going to show you guys Night Road. Internet is very fast, as you can tell. All right, cool. So we can pick up Night Road. And we're actually going to be able to see the work title, the people who have written it, the, the work ID. And we're going to run through these codes and what they mean in a little bit, because we're actually going to register a track together as well. Now we've got the splits in here and we've got one, two, three, four writers, but we also have a publishing company. When I registered, uh, when I released this track, I released this track with CR2 who owns a publishing company. And we're going to talk about publishing a little bit later on, but basically if you're signed to a publisher, you probably would know, <laughs> uh, you do, actually probably won't need to register anything to APRA. Your publisher is going to do everything for you. Um, all right. Let's register a track. So register works. Cool. So basically, like I said, if, you, if you've got a publishing contract, hopefully you know about it. <laughs> um, later on, when we do run through contracts and that sort of thing, we're going to run through all the details of a contract. And then the, the label may have a section of the contract for, for publishing. And that's going to be talking about taking a percentage of your writer's split. Um, so let's just go with the thought that you're not published for now. If you haven't signed a publishing contract uh, and you don't have a publisher, you're hundred percent. You're going to pick no. Are you published for this work? No. Is this work a remix? It's not a remix. And to answer the question of whether you would uh, register remixes you've made of other people, you don't register that to APRA. You're only registering tracks that you are a writer of. Um, so that's that question there. Do you, read, do you register other people's remixes of your tracks? I have heard of it, although I'm not sure it's essential. You can do it. Um, probably a few people in here are writing jingles, but today not for us. So that's pretty easy. The next step, you're gonna pick a work title. So I'm gonna pick one track that we haven't actually registered yet that's coming up on our album called Autumn Calls. So then I'm gonna put the uh, performer as Color Castle. Again, the performer is, is the, the na artist's name on the track. This track is two minutes and 39 uh, seconds long. Now we're coming to the ISRC code and this is going to be provided to you from the record label. What's really good with APRA is you actually don't necessarily need this code to um, start 
uh, a registration or to complete a registration, you can get this a little bit later on, um, which is really cool because for example, if you're playing gigs and making music and you've created a track and you're playing it at every gigs, but for two years, a record label hasn't signed it, but you're still playing it like, you know, you can still register it to APRA because it, there is a way you can still make money from that track that hasn't even been released. Um, it is a non-copyright work. And this one has two copyright owners. And so you can pick here, are this, the shares split equally? For the, in this case, they are. So I'm gonna hit next. And now it's got, and the other writer is Casper Tromp who does a lot of uh, production work with me. And it's already got the arranger, arranger. I can hit next. And then this will be uploaded. It comes up with a, a, a section where you can upload the audio. I think that's only relative to people that are making jingles. Um, so you don't need to worry about that for now. So that's how easy it is to, uh, to register to APRA. It's so, so easy. And um, what's really good about APRA and what I really, really, really like is uh, it's different from a lot of other places uh, like PPCA, um, where if you have a back catalog of music, say you've got, um, I don't know, two or three albums that you've released um, over the last three years, but you haven't um, registered any of these tracks to APRA, then APRA actually holds your money. So basically you collect, connect, um, contact the label, get the IRSE codes, register every single track that you've released to APRA and you're gonna probably have a pretty uh, good little nest egg of money there for you. So basically, yeah, jump on there. If you haven't, if you have made tracks and they haven't been registered, don't stress, do it now. There's, you know, sooner than later. Um, if anyone has any questions when they're going through APRA, trying to register, um, just message me. Um, and now if, if anyone is on, I'm pretty sure everyone here's Aussie, but if anyone's listening from overseas, I did mention that there is a, a part of the website where it does show APRA's affiliates. So if you are from overseas and you like, what the fuck is APRA? What is this crazy Australian person talking about? You can jump on to their website, which I'll, I'll have a little link as well. And you can see all of the affiliates. So like United States of um, America, USA has all these uh, different music royalty societies. UK has a few other ones. And so in theory, all of these societies work and connect together to help um, to, to help pay you. So if you're getting your music smashed in Spain uh, on the radio, technically those royalties should come through APRA and they should sit into your account. And um, the royalty statements, which are quarterly from APRA, um, they come in and, and, and they actually tell you where the music is coming from. Um, so this is the basics of APRA um, and the basics of, of, of the writing splits. Um, one other thing we can touch on, which I think is pretty important um, to, to, for any, any music producers out there is how to kind of negotiate or how do you know what, what your split is worth? Um, and this is something I think is super important to talk about earlier on um, when, when you're chatting to people. So, I, or you're working with your producers, basically, you, you know, you don't want to be arguing with people a week out of a release, um, trying to negotiate a bigger split for yourself. <laughs> it's something you want to talk about upfront and be honest about, know your worth and, and negotiate at the very beginning of the track. Um, I'll use another example of Color Castle. Um, whenever Casper and I sit in the studio together and start a track together, we have an agreement that it's 50-50. Um, and now we know that if we bring a vocalist on board, uh, a vocalist generally wants 50% if they're writing a top line that's kind of like a radio track and it's, you know, 80% vocals. So that's fine. So we know that then our 50-50 of that instrumental split is going to be 25-25 of the whole track because we're bringing a vocalist on board who's going to want about 50%. And that's generally a pretty fair assumption um, to split a track into one side vocals and the other side instrumentals, the vocal lyrics, all that stuff is generally going to be about 50%. The instrumental side is generally going to be about other 50% split between the other writers. Um, you can get quite complicated. You can get quite tricky. My opinion is you don't want to sell yourself too short. You don't want to overextend yourself, but at the same time, just being fair and just being kind of like nice is probably going to get you further down the track you're going to make a lot more friends this way you're going to probably work with people a lot more long term 
So it's one of those things you have to really weigh up um, when negotiating your split is, is it really worth kind of being a big hassle and trying to ask for too much? It's a music industry. We all, we all, we all know what we're worth and we are all quite proud of what we can do. Um, it's easy for some people maybe sometimes to um, put their value above others. So negotiating splits, always be fair and always talk about it at the very start. Um, I think that's probably enough for today. Next week we can do PPCA. What I will do is if anyone has any questions now, just um, take yourself off mute and ask away. Or are we all good? <laughs> I guess like, um, <clears throat> like you were saying, registering your work, do you, you were saying to do that even before a label signed it? Like do you, do you, as soon as you finish a piece, are you best just jumping on app for registering it? So if it does get picked up at some point, you've already done that. I mean, if it's mixed and mastered and you're playing it out, I think so. Uh, I think you definitely should. One subject we can go through on another, uh, another day is submitting your live performance reports and yeah. how that can benefit you. I think if, if you've got a, an, a, artist contract, a side artist agreement, and you're just hunting for a label, register it. There's no harm that can be done. So you, so let's just say I've finished a track, it's not signed and I'm just playing it out. You're saying that theoretically I can get paid for that by just registering with APRA and then what do I once a week let them know I played it four times over four gigs, that song, yeah. and then I get paid for that? Correct. Fuck me sideways. <laughs> 100%. So... And this is like, if you're legitimately playing your tracks, your gigs, and you're playing four gigs a week, then with your performance reports, you, you'll make an extra couple of thousand dollars a year. So How do it's they really, police that? Uh, it's an honesty system. Fuck, there must be some people taking the piss out there then. <laughs> well, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. Um, I, well, you know, in collaboration with that and people submitting club charts and the the machines in every sort of venue, I think they probably got a pretty fair idea of if someone is uh, is lying. I mean, and, you know, it is, like they, you have to sign, a, um, what do you call it? Um, yeah, yeah, just an honest yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay, if you, it's a legal, you, legal document. So exactly like if right, I'm yeah. playing, say I'm playing 10 Colour Castle songs a gig, should I, like, Obviously, when I put uh, when I put my when I put my report in, I think you're about to talk about it. But whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, I put the report in. Like, how do you get paid for me playing your songs if I'm not reporting to them that I played your songs? Yeah, so it's, it's um, so you are saying that you would put them in your performance report, or you're not. Well, so if, okay, so a performance report. Do I have to list every song I played at every gig? Is that um, what you don't have to? List not, not every song you can list your own. So I yeah, think yeah. maybe the, the club charts is probably more for the listing of, um, maybe other people's tracks. That's your top right. twenty. Your performance yeah, right. reports really you're only you're only needed to um, do your own ones. Right. Because I just was, I was um, while talking like you can, how are you, you can add others. You can add yeah. others. So you how are you to, uh, like yeah. how are you going to get paid from me playing your music at five gigs a week if I don't report to them that I'm doing that? Yeah, so I mean that's different from the, the so they've got the machines in different venues, and then they've yeah. also got the club charts. So there's a few other different ways. There's, yeah, basically there's a few different, few different options for that to come about. So let me, I'll just share the screen and I'll show you the performance reports. May as well just get into it while we're here. And um, so it's like so, any club as well, like any club around Australia, any any registered yeah. any registered business where they've got live music. Yeah, correct. So basically, w once you've logged into APRA. Um, you can go to your work set list or performance reports. And if you go to performance reports, oh, okay. <laughs> your system's closed, of course, because we've got yeah. coronavirus. But generally speaking, uh, you would be able to go in there and, and chuck your... Um, I, I do actually, um, let me remind me during the week to chat to Gabby and a couple other people and maybe Tara, because I, did, I do rem remember they said that you can maybe um, submit what you're playing on your live streams and your performance reports. So let me confirm that and I'll get back to you. Cause I think there is a way you can do it. But it's just not on APRA with the APRA website at the moment. Yeah. And you were saying, well, let's say I've got a track that I made from three years ago that I've been playing five nights a week for the last three years and yep. I'm only registering it now. You're saying yep. I can go back and claim. So if there is uh, so if it's not released, there might not be any money there. Um, but you can backdate, generally speaking, uh, you can backdate your yeah, live performance reports, I think one or two years. Yeah, right. But 
So basically, I, I remember um, a story when I was in Sydney and shared a, uh, shared a studio with G Wizard and, and Joey Kaz. Um, and G Wizard did all the mixes for like Ministry of Sound or something like that, or it was like R&B Super Club. And basically, he was entitled to register all of this stuff to APRA and he never knew. And he registered all of this uh, content to APRA and he got like 10 grand. <laughs> And he, he would, yeah, no one actually emails you and tells you, hey, we've got 10 grand sitting here for you. Yeah. Um, so it's something where you actually, yeah, you'll need to jump jump in and register what whatever you've made that's been released um, yourself. But uh, what we'll talk about next week is PPCA, which is registering the master split. And that's something that you need to register within the 12 month period they allow you to. Otherwise that money, I don't know where it goes, but it doesn't go. I think it yeah. might get divided and sent to um, other people, um, but I, I can't be certain. And this money's coming from the fees that the clubs pay correct. out per, per year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's correct. So basically every every club and venue, even um, the prey or whatever, I call non-pay APRA fees yep. to have. Um, and that even, I don't know, man, I think they're trying to get everything to, to pay a small fee to have to play music, which is fair enough. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, oh, it, any get, other questions? Yeah, I was just going to say, how often do you get paid, man? Like, I mean, how, when's the money come through? And I was actually going to ask the same thing. Like, uh, yeah, how, how do you, where's the money come from? Like, you know, obviously, <laughs> Super Bay and, you know, I did, I did these mixes for live clothing back in the day. And that was like a similar sort of thing. Live would actually pay <laughs> APRA um, a fee and you would get paid through that way. But um, yeah, so, and the same thing with the ARA charts, like how, if a track goes in the ARA charts, that's yours. Yeah, how, like how often do you get paid, or like when does the money come through? It's all quarterly. Uh, I, think you, I, think, I think your pizzas arrived, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna go. I'm gonna go. Please go. <laughs> um, Thanks, it, it, no worries. Uh, a few people that uh, sorry, I've just admitted now, but uh, sorry, I didn't get you in earlier. This has all been recorded anyway, though, so you will be able to go back and listen to to what we've said. Um, so basically, the money is paid quarterly. Uh, APRA sends you full statements. They tell you where the money is coming from and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's pretty in depth. It's pretty. In There's a lot of detail. No, no. No. How's it going, Kane? I'm just going to show you on mute. Um, is there any other questions? Hey, what's up? Yeah. I have a quick question. Um, so you say that all this you should register more like uh, as a person instead of like the project name, like the DJ name, or if it's a duo, it's more like a personal thing instead of the project. Yeah. So basically, it, it's actually a mixture of both. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share the screen again. I'm gonna go to my Spotify. Uh, just I'm just going to go to my Spotify. Okay, let's. So um, here's another example of, of kind of just breaking down exactly what you're talking about there, uh, Rayani. And um, so if I go to talk to me by Color Castle here and I click show credits, it's going to show the writers. So it's performed by Color Castle. So basically when you register your track to APRA, you're going to put the performer as Color Castle or the group. And then you're going to put who wrote the track as the writers, and this was 50%. Zoe, 25, 25, Casper, and Christian. Um, so in this particular track, you would look at Color Castle, talk to me, and you're like, oh, it's pretty obvious who wrote it. It's Color Castle. It's Christian and Casper. But for this particular track, for whatever reason, Zoe didn't want to be a featured artist, um, and but obviously she still wrote the vocals. Like I didn't write write or sing those vocals. <laughs> Uh, and she did an amazing job and she deserves that 50% and it's, and it's registered with APRA and you can go on to um, Spotify and you can pr pretty much pick any track and you can, you can show credits and it should tell you, yeah, look at this one here. This is Wasted Funk, Pete Brazen, Casper Trump, Christian Pilot, Marcello DeAngelis and Shane Kingsbury. Marcello is um, Birdie, Shane Kingsbury is Buried King, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's... Um, it's a, it's a mixture of, to answer your question again, it's a mixture of both. Thanks, man. Cheers. Is, um, is there anything I went through earlier that maybe I went through too fast that didn't make sense? Do you want me to go back over anything or is it kind of all, um, did everyone get what I was, what I was saying? Or what about, is there anyone else that has any ideas of maybe what we should, um, what we should be doing, doing some more of these on Is there any like, um, kind of subjects that people really want to talk about like I, I was thinking about we could even do 
could even do one on mental health in the music industry and just like especially during a time like this where it's coronavirus and people are you know um i, I don't know uh a bit yeah, under stress i think that's a pretty good idea i think like i was saying to you earlier in the week like something um that would probably benefit a lot of people is just like if you're a new artist and you've just finished your first track and you're about to send it off to a label and for whatever yeah. reason great music gets signed like what's what do you need to do step by step from that point to have yourself set up the best way like step one register for APRA step yeah. two register for PPCA and then like what are those steps you should take that you've learned over the years that you wish you'd done at the very beginning as opposed to waiting a year into it and going fuck why didn't I do that a year ago yeah, hundred percent. I think that's exactly what we'll do over the next, uh, say, six or however many weeks it takes. We'll just keep, keep doing them. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much the plan. And um, even if you're not producing just yet, I think it's all really good information to know because it's just going to keep you a step ahead of when you do produce. Cool, awesome. All right, guys, good stuff. Well. Um, thanks for joining and I'm going to put this online so you, people can go back to it. Um, if anyone has any questions afterwards, then let's go for it. It's really good to be doing this. I think it's just great to get everyone involved and just to even see a lot of your faces and that sort of stuff. Um, probably a while before we're all traveling interstate and catching up again. Uh, we're in, we're in uh, jail down here, but <laughs> um, yeah, look, and as well, if anyone's got any questions, just please hit me up at, at any time. Um, but unless there's any more for now, let's leave it there and let's jump back in. Uh, let's say same, same time next week. Awesome. Yeah, cheers, buddy. Appreciate it. No worries. It. All cheers. right. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks, Have a good night. Enjoy your night. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm. See you later. See you. Bye.